I've had my fair share of sleepless nights Had spinning thoughts rushing, I'm dissatisfied Tired of the bright lights, they're blinding me Wondering why you ever bothered to stick with me I've been a fucking mess since day one I'm stuck inside my head, I need someone I wonder what your friends have said about me I know you don't care though, so why do I even fucking bother? You got me staring at the ceiling again I'm wondering if you think about me too My thoughts are pounding at the back of my head While you're moving along so Track of days we're in a weird kind of lull This feeling just won't go away J'ai du mal à continuer J'ai le coup sous l'eau et j'ai plus pied T'arrêtes pas de taper dans mon crâne Y'a des gens, j'veux tout oublier T'es toujours là, tu me suis T'es comme un esprit qui m'affronte J'avais juste envie d'un peu de paix Tu peux pas me laisser deux secondes C'est pas comme si on n'avait pas essayé De le faire fonctionner Mais on était tous les deux juste crevés On a juste un moment donné You got me staring at the ceiling again I'm wondering if you think about me too My thoughts are pounding at the back of my head While you're moving along so
Hello? Is everybody there? Is anybody there? Hello? Hello? Today, my god, that's loud. Today we're breaking down and staring at the ceiling live on twitch.tv. This is what is happening right now. Right now, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna lie down on the floor, stare at the ceiling, and break down live on twitch.tv in front of a live audience. My mental health is going to uh, decline quickly, quickly, you know? So, um, what's going on, guys? So, here we have a threat. So you, this is the song we're talking about today. Okay, hold on. My stream banner? I don't know what you're talking about. Guys, if you don't stream the song right now, I will roundhouse kick you, as demonstrated in this photo right here. Um, what song, Charlie? What are you, what are you talking about? I go to your, to your Spotify page and I don't see anything. Worst Part of Heaven is your latest release, Charlie. What are you talking about? Wrong. Wrong. We're talking about Staring at the Ceiling by Charlie. Explicit. I say the F, I say the F word in this song. I say the F word. And today we're going to talk about how that came to be. You know? <laughs> um so let's wait let's wait for a couple more people to to get into this into this live stream and if you're if you're cool then we, then you will have you will see it. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying all right guys before we begin I got to show you guys the um quote-unquote studio that I made this song in. Um, I gotta show you guys the setting in which this song was created. Because I wrote this song while I was... So, okay, a lot of you know that in the, in the middle of July to the middle of August, I was basically homeless and living. Um, that's when I made... That's when this song was made. So I made this song, you know, mixed it on earbuds, all that, all that good bullshit. And let me show you guys my studio while I was making that song. I'm, I'm, hold on, I'm scrolling up on Discord, trying to find this picture. This is not a joke. What I'm pulling, what I'm about to pull up might look like a joke. It is not a joke. There's a lot of memes here. It was, it was after this. I hope you guys are doing well. Where the hell is it? Where's my studio? Where's my studio? It's gone. I can't find it. My studio is gone. Breaking news. My studio is gone. It's not here, so we're gonna look. We're gonna have a quick look. We're gonna have, we're gonna do a quick detour here to Instagram.com forward slash Charlie Makes Music underscore to my new Charlie Instagram. Shut up, shut up, Bren. And uh, here it is. So this is the quote unquote studio that I made staring at the ceiling in. And if I'm not mistaken, this literally is staring at the ceiling. If you look at the project file, you can see these here. Yeah, this is literally the first version of staring at the ceiling on my screen in this picture. So this is where the song was made. Um, but here's the song. If you haven't seen it, if you haven't heard it, you're a loser and that's on you and you suck. Uh, if you have heard it, you're a winner. So, 
let's go ahead and uh, let's take a quick listen to some parts of it, and uh, we're gonna just go ahead and break it down. She came in staring at the ceiling again. I'm wondering if you think about me too. My thoughts are pounding at the back of my head. Why are you moving along? Something new. You came in staring at the ceiling again. I'm wondering if you think about me too. My thoughts are pounding at the back of my head. So that's the song. If you ha if you want to hear the whole thing, Mr. Ethel TM, you can go to Spotify and and stream it. <laughs> um, anyway, all right. Enough with the jokes and the and the fuckery. So, before we begin the technical breaking down of this song and answering any of your questions, I'm going to tell you guys the original version of this song was originally a cover for one of my friends. So if you know this guy Nabita. Nabita is my friend Ben, and Nabita put out a video a little while ago. Let's see if we can find it, because Nabita tweets a lot. Um, Nabita put out a video a little while ago, and I really liked the song in that video. So, I covered it. Wait, do I have the reference track? I do, that makes things a lot easier, so never mind. But do go follow Nabita at Nabita. So this is what, this was the original reference track, like the track that I was covering. We don't need this. Turn all of this back down to how it was. Oh, yeah, we're gonna have to take all this off. Now I ain't even felt shit since my house dropped Drink some fucking mouthwash Take a bad bitch to the hilltop Throw up on the road saying fuck cops Drink another bull, make my teeth rot I don't wanna feel another fucking thing 2020 been a joke, I just wanna go home I see fire in the road, people coming for your throat Okay, so I heard this, I really liked it, and I did a cover of it And that was, that's what this song originally was So... I'll show you guys right now. This is what it sounded like uh, back in the cover days, or at the very early stages. I ain't even felt shit since my house dropped. Drink some fucking mouthwash. Take a bad bitch to the hilltop. Pull up on the road saying fuck cops. Drinking all the bull, make my teeth rot. I don't wanna feel another fucking thing. 2020 been a joke, I just wanna go home. I see fire in the road, people coming for your throat. Tell me once, tell me twice, your Cronati mine is nice. A cab, fuck ice, turn around again. So that was the original version of this song as a cover. Um, and then I turned it into an original, like my own lyrics and everything. This is why the final track says, fuck, it's true. No, I did use some lyrical uh, aspects of, the, of, the, of Nabita's song in my own in the end, but yeah. So let's go over it. This song without the vocals is actually quite simple. If you listen to, for instance, this is the, the, the intro. I've had my fair share of sleepless nights Head spinning thoughts rushing, I'm dissatisfied If I take the vocals out, this is a very... A very minimal instrumental. I don't know what's been going on with my Ableton the last couple of days, but it's been really CPU heavy. Uh, forgive me. Anyway, let's get into the production, shall we? We're, we'll do the vocals last because this is such a huge part of the song. So let's do everything else first in order of appearance. So first things that come in are these pads, which are edited versions of my own pads, which if you've watched my streams before, 
you know that I make my own pads all the time. Uh, so that's those pads edited. And I have this filtering, you know, filter on them. Like that. And there in the background, we have this Omnisphere pluck. With some chorus. This is like in memoriam or something. Which then gets layered with a another one here. That's there. And we have the guitar. Now this is really stupid. Uh, because while, once again, when I was making this, I didn't have a studio. All I had was a laptop, this very microphone, and this electric guitar. So in order to record the electric guitar, I didn't have a jack. I forgot to bring a jack input with me, but I did have my microphone. So I brought my microphone down, <laughs> and I played the chords. Oh fuck, I don't have the tuning anymore. What is it any what is it again? Yeah, I don't have the tuning anymore, but I just recorded my guitar strings really close to my microphone. And that's how those guitars So that, that's literally just my, look, I have the full recording. It's my acoustic guitar, uh, my electric guitar strings played up close to the microphone. a few times so I could layer left and right. Anyway, I put some filters on it and some imager in this intro one because I want it to be filtered and a little bit wide, so you get this. And uh, and you get this intro bit. All right, then the the actual verse is pretty much exactly the same except minus the guitar. So those two, the pads, and I added some drums, which is just this stupid kick and a really weird like rim shot. And this is the Scarby Rickenbacker bass that I did this processing on. Playing, um, It's playing a fifth, but an octave above, so plus 19 semitones. Yeah, and then a bit of percussion here. The guitar is not a plug-in, it's just me recording my electric guitar against the mic. That's literally it. Um, the alias set this command to be of latest does not exist. Thanks, Nightbot. That's really helpful. Is that a nice mic? It's okay. It's called the SE Electronics X1 mic, or as I like to call it, the Sex One. And um, it's all right. It's a pretty, it's a decent mic for the price. I've been thinking of getting a new mic at some point, kind of soon. But it has done me well for a long time, and I do recommend it for anyone trying to get into recording um, instruments or your voice. This is definitely a good microphone to go with it. Um, right, yeah, so, uh, yeah, percussion's very simple here. We've got a hi-hat and then a couple percussion hits. Yeah, and then that's it. That's literally what the intro sounds like, instrumental-wise. And then we get into the first part of the chorus. I'll go over this shit next, which is, again, the filtered guitar first. Well, everything's filtered in this little part here. With nothing. 
which is the guitar and the pads and the vocal. And then we have this little fill and these, and then everything comes in. So in this chorus, once again, still the same pads and uh, little leads. Here we have the raw recording of the guitar, and I'm not kidding, there is no processing on these two tracks, aside from a tuner. And it's just panned left and right with like, essentially this is the first half of the recording, and then, or this is the second half of the recording, and uh, the first half here, panned left and right. <laughs> Far from perfect, far from sounding really good, but it is what it is, and it sounds fine. Um, so, yeah, layered with that, we've got the bass again, playing along with the chords this time. Fun fact about this song, there was no sidechain at any point because my kick is clipping so incredibly loud that it just distorts everything around it and therefore just auto sidechains that way. But again, the drums here with a bit more percussion going on. It's still very minimal. Yeah, and all that together, minus the vocals. Yeah, these two are guitar. I just said that. They were left and right guitar. There you go. Um, next up we have this cool little section, which is I think my favorite section of the track is like these little turnaround bits that are like, you know, half the chorus length and it sounds like this. Thank you, Super Rufus, for your prime sub. Appreciate that loads. So this part has the same drums, except instead of the rim shot, it's just like a, a kind of trappy snare. Um, and the kick changes from this one to this one, which is like punchier and yeah, louder, I guess. And we've got these 808s. So this is an 808 sample that I found ages ago. I've got a tube on it. Uh, tube distortion, some EQ, this other EQ, I guess, boosting the lows a little bit. And, uh... And that's, that's the tube distortion. I have the pads stop, starting and stopping in tandem with the 808. If I turn the filter on it off there you go um and then on top of here we've got some cool little sounds so there's like a this isn't an, an again this is the rickenbacker bass with some weird eqing and compression on it and it sounds like this Right, and then I'm essentially doing like a little medley of loops that interplay with each other's melodies. Bit of Robotaki in there. Don't know if Preston's in the chat, but there you go. Uh, and so those guys kind of play with each other. It's just a question of layering those sounds together. Um, and honestly, production-wise, that's it. Because then the track just repeats. I think the only difference is in this, in, this, uh, in this turnaround in the second half. So in the first half, it's got like this chord progression. Whereas in the second half, it mirrors the chord progression of the, of the verses.
So there you go. Um, and that's it. Production-wise, that's it. It's really simple. It's just fucking distorted drums, two basses, and some pads, some guitars, basic synths, and these guys over here. Uh, most of the work is actually carried by the vocals, which are here. So let's take a look at those. Uh, on the tracks themselves, there's not much processing, just auto-tuning and a bit of you know, imaging and uh, some compression for the harmonies. Um, but let's look at, look at the main vocals first, which are these. So on the vocal bus, I seem to have two layers of processing. There's one on the main bus here, where I've got a compressor. This is my typical vocal chain some noise reduction, a bit of EQ, a bit of compression, and soothe. We're doing the vocals right now. And on the top chain, we've got some more compression, more EQing, some de a little bit of echo, and that's it. Um, so I'll turn everything off, and you can sort of hear what it sounds like if I turn everything off. I've had my fair share of sleepless nights Head spinning thoughts rushing, I'm dissatisfied Pretty bad You add the first layer of processing, you get this I've had my fair share of sleepless nights Head spinning thoughts rushing, I'm dissatisfied Tired of the bright lights, they're blinding me So it's already a little bit better, a little bit clearer, but it's still kind of a lot and then with this second one, it should basically tame most of everything down. I've had my fair share of sleepless nights. So in this case, the echo is actually doing so much work because it sound like it just makes it, it just makes it sound, it sound like like less stiff. Like if I just leave it like this. Hello, what the fuck? The fuck? I've had my There we go, I'm fucking back. Fucking kill me. I don't know what's been going on with my computer the last, like, two days, but it's been so insufferably, incredibly annoying. And it makes no sense that it would be this fucking broken, because I've, I got it, like, just over a year ago. Hello? Bitch ass. Jesus Christ. I'm about to start screaming profanities in French like the second verse of staring at the ceiling. Asking if I'm on Windows is a pretty bold question to ask, like right now, when you can see my entire computer. Yeah, I'm on Windows. Look up here. Microsoft. Alright, let's see if this works now. 
I think my computer, what's going to happen is tonight I'm just going to turn it off and I might just leave it off all of tomorrow. Just let it sit there and think about what it's been doing. Seriously, I don't know what's been going on. It started last night. Last night, like, my computer just started absolutely shitting itself for no reason. Yeah, I'll show you, I'll show you Echo Boy. I give it a moment. I'll show you everything. Just as soon as my see, like my like this is this is a small project file, you know, F fifty nine tracks. Why am I idling at thirty nine percent CPU? This is ridiculous. My computer. I think I need to to do some maintenance. I I keep this thing clean, but I think I need to do some deep maintenance. Anyway, so as I was demonstrating. If you turn the Echo Boy off, let's see if this works, shall we? If you turn the Echo Boy off, it sounds pretty dull. I've had my fair share of sleepless nights, head spinning thoughts, rushing, I'm dissatisfied. Tired of the bright lights that blinding me, wondering why you ever bothered to stick with me. I've been a fucking mess since day one. I'm stuck inside my head and need someone. So, um,. Yeah, it's doing a lot. It's adding a space. This is the preset. If you want to take a screenshot of it, go ahead. Um, but there you go. You might have a bunch of plugins active. I do. I have a bunch of plugins active, but um, this is a 59 track. This is a 59 track project file. And just like a month ago, I was running 160 tracks perfectly fine with a bunch of plugins. And yes, I'm sure for a fact that it's my Mac and not my interface because um, like everything on my computer gets slower. Anyway, it's fine. It's fine. I'll sort that out on my own time, but there you go. So that Echo Boy like just adds a ton of space and a ton of like life to the vocal where before it, it sounds kind of lame and stupid. I've had my fair share of sleepless nights Head spinning thoughts rushing, I'm dissatisfied Tired of the bright lights that blinding me Wondering why you ever bothered to stick with me I've been a fucking mess since day one I'm stuck inside my head, I need someone Uh, so that's it. Um, vocal wise, let's have a look at, at what's going on. So we've got the lead vocal, which is here. As I mentioned, I said the F word. Um, was it Bren? Someone in my Discord server, or it might have been Thog. I don't know. Someone in my Discord server mentioned that it was funny that over here, the F word is loud and clear. I've been a fucking mess. But then in this part over here. Also, why do I even fucking bother? It's censored. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Um, where is it? This you solo these guys. As well as the vocal. Also, why do I even fucking bother? I don't know. I'm built different. That's all I gotta say. Anyway, so yeah, um, main vocal down here. We've got harmonies, which are like basically they've got a bunch of a, a bunch more echo basically on them, and they sound like this. Fucking mess. Stuck inside my head. Right, and you layer those with the original. Stick with me, I've been a fucking mess since day one I'm stuck inside my head, I need someone And those come back in the French verse as well Tapez dans mon crâne, y'a des jours, j'veux tout oublier T'es toujours là, tu me suis, t'es comme un esprit qui m'affronte J'avais juste envie d'un peu de paix, tu peux pas me laisser de... So, there you go Um, we've got... In the chorus, we've got some harmonies. So this track down here is a harmony track. Staring at the ceiling again. If you think about me too. It's pounding at the back of my head. On to something new. Staring at the ceiling again. And if you think about me too. My thoughts are pounding at the back. So you got the pretty basic harmony track, and then over here, underneath the sort of quote-unquote big part of the chorus, which is this second half here, 
I sang the lead an octave higher. You got me staring the same again. I'm wondering if you think about me too. My thoughts are pounding at the back of my head. Why you moving along to something new? And so all of that layered together, you get some nice, some nice voices. Uh, then there's this cool little ad lib. Oh, here's something interesting. So in this section here, right? Um, in this section here. I actually used some of, I used the end of my lead vocal as like a rhythmic thing. So at the end of my lead vocal, there's like some noise and I just repeated it. Why you moving along to something new? Just adding a bit of texture, I guess. It felt right, so I did it. Uh, and I added this as well, which is me singing, staring at the ceiling, but then I little alter boyed it down. So I form and shifted it down. It sounds like this. Staring at the ceiling, staring at the ceiling again. Yeah, which I believe... If I just take it off, it sounds pretty normal. Staring at the ceiling. Ableton, don't fucking do this to me. I will literally kill you. Staring at the ceiling, staring at the ceiling again. You get the idea. Staring at the ceiling, staring at the ceiling again. And then you put that on top. Staring at the ceiling, staring at the ceiling again. that's it that's the track oh is there one more difference yeah in this uh end bit here i sang like an octave i sang like and then pitched it up like two octaves or an octave two octaves so that layered on top of that section <laughs> That's it. That's the song. Um, that was a quick breakdown, 38 minutes. Not too much there. But uh, I'll answer your questions. So if you have any questions about this song, about anything about it, production-wise, writing-wise, process-wise, anything, um, just let me know. Drop your questions in the chat, and uh, I'll be happy to answer them. And um, hopefully... Is it raining? Oh, thank God, it's not raining. I thought I heard rain. And my clothes are outside drying. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Are you enjoying making this kind of music more than the Dumu type music? This is a difficult question to answer because Dumu type music that you've been hearing versus Dumu music that I've been writing recently is very, very different. And you'll hear that next year. Um, you'll hear that next year. 2021, I, I, there's a pretty large shift that's happening in, in Dumu, and you will see that, uh, you'll see that in due time. But yes, I, if we're talking about this versus EDM, this I very much prefer writing than EDM. That's not to say that I don't like writing EDM from time to time, or like electronic, like very electronic, sort of typical uh, electronic music. It's just that it's not what brings me the most joy anymore. Um, but then again, saying that electronic music doesn't bring me much joy anymore isn't true because when I write stuff that's like chill house or, or stuff like that, then it does bring me joy. But like the typical, you know, future bass, energetic house, electro house type stuff just doesn't do it for me anymore. Uh, not as much. And so, um, yeah. What do the French lyrics say? Okay, um, let's pull up the lyrics. Um, wrote them in Discord, because I have a Discord server where I just 
have like a notepad and shit. It's just me and the server. So when Discord decides to open, God bless my computer. Let's pull up staring at the ceiling. So here are the staring at the ceiling lyrics. Um, you can see all the iteration that it went through here. And then, yeah, final lyrics here. So these are the French lyrics. Non, j'ai du mal à continuer, j'ai le coup sous l'eau et j'ai plus pied. T'arrêtes pas de taper dans mon crâne, il y a deux jours, je veux tout oublier. T'es toujours là, tu me suis, t'es comme un esprit qui m'affronte. Etc, etc. Uh, let's say this... Um, let's try and do this kind of... You know, line by line. Translating what each of them means. Uh, T'arrêtes pas de taper dans mon crâne, il y a deux... Oh, sorry, let's talk, start with the first line, that would be good. Non, j'ai du mal à continuer, j'ai le coup sous l'eau et j'ai plus pied. means I'm having trouble going on, I've, my neck's underwater, and I'm losing footing. You know, as if you're kind of starting to drown. T'arrêtes pas de taper dans mon crâne, il y a des jours, je veux tout oublier. This one's pretty simple, it just means, you know, you're pounding at the back of my head. Uh, there's days that I'd like to forget it all. T'es toujours là, tu me suis, t'es comme un esprit qui m'affronte. Essentially means you're still here, you're always here, um, you're always following me, you're like, a spirit confronting me. J'avais juste envie d'un peu de paix, tu peux pas me laisser deux secondes, meaning I just wanted a bit of peace, can't you leave me for two seconds? C'est pas comme si on n'avait pas essayé de le faire fonctionner, it's not as if we hadn't tried to make it work. On était tous les deux juste crevés, on a juste abandonné, but we were both exhausted and we just gave up. Essentially that's what the lyrics, the French lyrics say. Um, they're a little bit sad, but it is what it is. And... Um, yeah. Um, what's better, open back headphones or studio monitors if my room acoustics are shit? S open back headphones. If your room sounds like garbage, like mine does, headphones are always going to be better. Where do you find slash look for textures? You always have great ones. I just, I don't know, dude. I just, I have a bunch of samples that I've downloaded over the years, not just... Not just splice and cymatics and shit like that, you know, you gotta look for like obscure packs that are just full of like old school like jazz or, or old samples and old sounds and that's kind of where I get all my textures from by manipulating those weird wacky samples. How do you learn to manipulate all these plugins to do what you want it to do because quite frankly I have no idea how to use these plugins, how to use plugins other than reverb and EQ. It's a long process, I've been making music for over eight years. So I've been like producing in Ableton Live for over eight years. So it's definitely something that you learn over time. The best way that I can tell you to learn how to use these plugins is to just use the damn plugins. Start by learning what every audio effect in Ableton does and, and experimenting with different ways of using them and then move on from there. My monitor must be huge. Are you saying that because I keep having to move around like that whenever I look at things? It's pretty big. It's 32 inches. Um, but yeah. Any questions about the song specifically, though? Oh, Ableton. It's 1440p. You know, it's not that big. It's not 4K. It's 1440p. Asus 32 inch. There he is. Follow up. Any suggestions on monitor headphones? If you're going for closed back, uh, I use my closed back headphones are the Sony MDR7506. If you're looking for open back, it's uh, DT990s by Biodynamic. That's the one that I use. Those are the ones that I use. Some people, like Mern, might uh, recommend you, tr you use the Sennheiser HD600s, which if I had a stupid amount of money to spend on headphones, I would get, but I don't, and these are perfectly fine for me. So, DT990's Sony MDR7506. How do you make everything sound separated? I'm not sure what that means, but it's just a question of making sure everything fits well into your mix. Um, so like 
for instance, these two sounds here, they're in the background most of the time. But they're not trying, they're not up front. They're not trying to be up front. They're not supposed to be up front. So I'm leaving them in the back quieter. And that's something that takes a lot of time for a lot of early producers to learn is that not every sound in your dang song has to be the loudest sound and not everything has to be heard for it to make an impact. If I took those two sounds out, you would immediately notice even if you didn't know that they were there to begin with. So there you go. There's... My throat is so dry right now. Maybe I sh I'm eyeing up my tap over there right now, you know? Hmm. Hydration looking mighty... I'm, I'm getting tempted. Might, looking mighty good. Looking mighty good. Um, yeah. Hit me up with any other questions you guys have about this song. Um... There's something that you liked about it. Whatever. Run it back and hydrate yourself. True, I could do that. What inspired the cover art? Oh, the cover art! How did... Okay, hold on. We're gonna take these things one, one thing at a time. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is get up and go get some water, because if I don't, I might just start he dry heaving. Then I'll answer your questions. Let's go. I'll play this while I go eat eat some while I go eat some water. I'll play this. I've had my fair share of sleepless nights, head spinning thoughts rushing. I'm dissatisfied. Tired of the bright lights, they're blinding me Wondering why you ever bothered to stick with me I've been a fucking mess since day one I'm stuck inside my head and need some I've decided that water is for chumps And I'm drinking ginger ale And I'm about to give you all I'm about to give you all a treat Open your ears Open your minds Oh, yeah. You're so welcome for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Love that. Bit of Schweppes ginger ale. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. All right. Um, what inspired the cover art? Let's talk about the cover art for a minute. So... Oh, where is it? Here's the cover art in large for those of you who haven't seen it. I'm very happy with it. I think it looks sick. Um, the picture is a photo from a disposable camera that I got developed recently. Um, where's the picture? This is, no. It's one of these. There it is. This is the original photo. So I brought it into Photoshop, and I obviously cropped it to be a square, and then Photoshopped out some of the fingers, and I liked these clouds a lot, so I took some of those clouds and brought them back into the picture. So you can see, like, this bit in the middle wasn't originally there. It's me bringing some clouds from somewhere else and blending them in. The text was very inspired by Jeremy Zucker's Supercuts artwork, where he's just got this weird, like, smear, this, like, RGB smear effect going on. And I wanted to do something like it, so I did. What I love about this is that, like, it's hard to read, but it's also really legible. Like, that just clearly says staring at the ceiling. But it's so weird looking. I love that about it. Um, the way that I did the RGB smear is... I honestly don't really remember. But... I did it in motion. And I essentially used, like... I think I used some prism. I used some uh, directional blur. 
and then weird blend modes, stuff like that, chromatic aberration. Yeah, it's chromatic aberration, but it's like smeared, you know? It's not just like straight up chromatic aberration, like 3D effect, whatever. It's like a smear, and I really like that. Um, I used the, the similar processes to make this video where the text just kind of goes in and out of being kind of legible and then less legible. Except here I also did some hue keyframing and animation. <clears throat> so there you go. That's the artwork. Uh, it was inspired by the picture of the sky that I took on my disposable camera. And Jeremy Zucker. I, the video I made in motion, um, Apple, like motion five by Apple. It's like After Effects, but by Apple, the same way that Premiere and Final Cut are kind of complementary programs. After Effects and Motion. Yeah. Uh, how long did it take to make this track from start to finish? So I started the track uh, July 31st, technically, even though it says August 1st. I started the night of July 31st. And let's see when I finished it, <clears throat> or when I rendered the last master out. I rendered the last master on September 5th, which I, that's not when I finished the track. I finished it way earlier, but actually we can even look at a specific, that's great. How great is this? That's not how long I actually spent on the song. Let's check my um, my logs. See, what the hell is this session there? So take away, essentially I spent about, you know, there's 12 hours here, seven hours here in these sessions. Um, three hours here. So that's kind of the bulk of it. So it took maybe maybe 20, maybe 20 hours. Something like that. Um, 20, 22 hours, 23 hours, something like that. I don't know what the fuck this is. I must have left my... I honestly don't know what this is. There's no way in hell I left Ableton open with this project for almost two days. That did not happen. But anyway, 69. Funny, funny. Um, and yeah... Let's see, let's see, let's see what other questions that I get. How did you get the two octave ooh so buttery, slippery, smooth sounding? I just like the sound of it. I just, um, it's just fucking me. I just like transpose it up two semitones in complex mode. Apparently I flattened it as well, but there you go. And then I'm using filters essentially. Low pass and a bunch of reverb and delay uh, is kind of what. I'm using low pass to get rid of those like harsh, like annoying frequencies when you pitch something up. And uh, yeah. Um, how's the mastering process? This is actually kind of interesting because if you look at the start of my master chain, there's a sound shifter going down 70 cents, which means that this song is 70 cents uh, flat. So the way that I wrote it, it actually sounded like this. She me staring at the ceiling again I'm wondering if you think about me too My thoughts are pounding Which is a little weird. But we start with that. Then I've got this EQ that takes care of a lot of the low mids and a lot of the harsh highs and stuff. Especially in this part here. You Uh, followed by Soothe, which isn't doing too much, I don't think. Just getting rid of this stuff. And then I've got Glue Compressor, compressing and pushing the volume high. And Pro L2 doing some True Peak Limiting, pushing the volume a little harder even. And uh, that's it. Pretty simple master. There you go. How did you approach... Oh, hold on. Anything else here? No. 
how did you approach slash build the structure? Start with verse and build around it. So the original structure went up until here, and that was dictated by the cover, like the lyrics of the cover. Uh, and then afterwards, I didn't immediately want to go straight in, back into a verse and chorus again, so I added this little turnaround, and uh, that's it. That's basically how it was done in terms of the structure. I followed the lyrics of the original cover that I was, or song that I was covering for the whole first half, which is verse and chorus, and then added a turnaround because I didn't just want to go straight back into a verse. So there you go. Um, a video. How long have you been doing visual art stuff that you're learning along with music creating? Yeah, so I've been, okay. Stuff like motion graphics and the stuff that I do in motion, I actually only picked up a couple months ago during lockdown. But I've been using Photoshop since I started making music because I've always been doing at least part of my own artwork. So I've been doing Photoshop for about eight years as well. And I've been editing video since I was nine, which is even earlier than I started making music. So I've been editing video for 11 years. And so you put those two skill sets together and it's pretty easy to get into motion graphics. Um, so yeah. How do you organize your track and clip colors in your mind? So my clip colors, I actually leave them on random because I like having a nice colorful project. But you can see that everything is bust and a big that everything, in what like I every want track in the bus the has the color of the track. So drums are in red, so the drum tracks themselves are red, but the drum clips can be whatever colors they want. Bass is always in a sort of light, sort of nice blue. Uh, and again, the tracks are blue, but the, the clips can be whatever color they want. Instruments is this green and I've got you know a little bit of You know a couple stragglers out there as they as they all as there always are and then vocals in pink um, If I have effects they'll usually go in purple and if I have noise they'll usually go in kind of a gray um, Gray purple type thing Thank you piano boy for the tip. I appreciate that so much. I don't know if that popped up on scream screen scream that's screen and stream together but right up here, shout out to the piano boy. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, that means a lot to me. Um, your songwriting decisions, are they mainly based on what feels right to me? Yeah. <laughs> I just kind of go with it, right? Like, I don't think about it too much, especially in terms of structure and lyrics and stuff like that. Structure, I don't think about, like, at all, almost. I just kind of go with it. If I'm like, oh, I like this uh, chorus, whatever, and then, I mean, that's literally what I talked about, right? I like the verse and chorus, but I didn't want to go straight back into a verse. So I was like, hmm, what can I do? I can either leave like a, you know, half bar gap or something like that to go back in, or I could do something interesting and do a turnaround for uh, four bars and then go back into a, uh, and that's, that's it. Um, it's, it's, yeah, very much sort of in the moment, kind of what feels right to me right now. No pun intended. And there you go. Actually, question. Once this whole weird situation is over and you're able to play live shows, would you want them to be all Dumu focused or would you want to include some Charlie tracks in there too? Okay. So I'm not a performer. I really don't like... Um, Performing. It's not something that I enjoy doing very much. Uh, if you caught my MCTV, like my Minecraft MCTV, I mean Monster Cat TV performance where I did a bunch of my Monster Cat tracks on vocals and guitar and like on the keyboard and the synth and stuff. It was fun enough, but it's not something that I super enjoy doing. So anytime I do a live show, it would probably be a DJ set under the name Dumu. Um, and unless I'm doing like a really chill set, I don't see myself including much Charlie music other than like some of the beats tracks maybe, but again, it would have to be a really chill set. Um, so if I do, if I do live shows again, it'll probably be Dumu focused uh, because again, performing is just not where I shine. I, I shine right here making music in my room. Um, you know, making music in my room where no one can judge me too harshly. I, and in a way, Twitch is performance in and of itself because I'm having to entertain you guys while I make music. But the difference is like, when you when it comes to music performance, I'm not an instrumentalist, right? I didn't grow up playing the keys. I didn't grow up playing guitar. 
all of my skills on piano and guitar are purely from the stuff that I've learned from making music. My knowledge of guitar, despite this fact that so much of my music includes guitar, is so incredibly limited. There's so much that I can't do that I have to resort to editing pretty crazy and, and stuff like that. My knowledge of keys is even worse uh, somehow, despite the fact that I've been playing keys way longer than I've been playing guitar for music production. Um, and I'm not a singer either, so unless I have a vocal chain with like auto-tune and a bunch of processing on it, I hate the way my voice sounds uh, in terms of singing. And so, you know, for those reasons, I'm not comfortable doing live performances. Even if Charlie's stuff, I, I get really, really like, first of all, I get really nervous, but also I just, it's not something that I enjoy doing that much. So yeah, live sets are probably like live, Dumu live is probably going to be DJ sets for 99% of the time, unless I'm doing something in lockdown where someone forces me to do a performance where I record myself playing it and then use none of the audio that I recorded and fix all my mistakes in post, which is exactly what I did for the Monster Cat performance. So yeah. Do you ever have issues with Ableton or takes, or do you just keep recording until you get what you need? Um, so I didn't have a system for this until recently, but actually, if you look in my new template, in my updated template, um, it's I have a system now where I essentially have a recording track, which me like means that I'm able to keep track of my take numbers, because the way that Ableton does it is if you, you know, no matter how many times you record on this track, it's gonna add one number, so if I open, for instance, a project that I'm working on right now, and I show you the vocals, it'll you'll see that like, yeah, I just kind of, I'll record until I get what I need. And then sometimes if I need to interject, I'll do it on this recording track and then bring it into the processing tracks afterwards. And I can keep track of the takes, like I said, because uh, it keeps tracks of the numbers. You'll see in a second when this project fucking decides to open. <clears throat> I will not play this song, by the way. This is a Doomu 2021 song. I'm not playing a second of it. Keys are annoying. been playing for almost eight years, and I don't know how to compose something I view as good. I think good is always subjective, and you'll always be your harshest critic. I definitely think that if you come into music production with a knowledge of an instrument, you're already miles ahead of anybody who comes into, you know, music production without knowledge of instruments. I started producing when I was 13 years old. I had had piano lessons for a few months when I was seven, and that was it. That was the extent of my knowledge for music production. Here, you can see this. So all these tracks are called like Rec 42, 43, 51, 57. So that's the number of takes that I did, because I always record them up here. And then, you know, if I'm happy with it, I also have like um, key binds set up on my computer. So if you look up here, my metronome is set to my tilde key up in the top left of my keyboard. And I've got the apostrophe key set up as the record key in Ableton, which makes it really easy because it means that like when I'm trying to record something new, right? Say I want to record something at this point, I can start it here, just tap the, the, um, Make sure I'm record armed, right? But I can start playing, just tap the the apostrophe key, and I'm on my way recording. Um, so if you can set up some systems like that for yourself where you've got like, same thing, like I've got uh, my slash key set up as setting markers. So wherever I go, I can just hit slash and it'll drop a new marker, you know? Um, so setting up key binds in Ableton is a really, is really, uh, really useful. I just I just implemented this along with this, you know, rec track in my template just recently. So, there you go. I'm not giving you a preview. I can't show you this track. It's too good. It's genuinely one of my favorite things I've done. Um But yeah. I think it's blocked by your video, but you monitor, you just monitor off and monitor from your interface when recording. When I'm recording vocals, I don't monitor at all. I just pop an ear out and record straight into the mic. When I'm recording guitar, I do monitor straight from my interface, which has like straight up uh, monitoring. So that's it.
if I'm recording anything but guitar, like anything through the microphone, I just pop an ear out of the headphone and just play it. So if it's my kalimba, my ukulele, my guitar, I just pop an ear out, hear myself from here, and that's the way that I do it. Um, yeah. Any other questions, you guys, for staring at the ceiling? Let me know. Very sorry that I got a little annoyed earlier, uh, a little angry. It's not in my character, as many of you know, to get angry. But recently, my computer has been acting very erratically, and it's it's very stressful, especially because I have a lot of projects to complete right now. Um, so, apologies again. If I scared any of you. Um, but if no one has any other questions, I'm not sure what else to do, you know? This is a breakdown stream. I could play the song, lie down on the floor, and break down for a while. We could, do, we could all do that together. Alright, well, it looks like, uh... Everybody seems to have asked their questions. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. Um, if you came in late, you hit your quota last night while listening to, uh, Staring at the Ceiling by Charlie. Anyway, if you came in late and you want to, I essentially covered everything in here, uh, so you can watch the VOD back. Um, but if you heard the song and you have any pressing questions, drop them now, because otherwise we're probably going to end the stream already, very quick, an hour. Uh, much shorter than my usual streams. But yeah, my computer's acting really stupid and it's a little annoying to, to be on right now. So I think, uh, unless anybody has any pressing questions about the production of this or the the process or, or something like that then i will probably end the stream here and uh yeah so once again i hope you'll stream staring at the ceiling by charlie on spotify apple music it's going to go up on soundcloud immediately after this stream is over do you see what i'm talking about look how slow my computer is like, how slow does it, it's taking to, like, how long it's taking to load Spotify? It's unbelievable. Not the, not about the track specifically, what happened to Speed Beats? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get back into it. I really am. Um, but, as you know, so the last Speed Beats that I did was June. I didn't do July because I was in the process of packing all my stuff uh, to move. And then, as most of you know, I had a lot of misadventures with my moving. And I and uh, moved... Yeah. I didn't do one in September. I will try to do one the second week of October. But I'll let you guys know. I've been just really busy getting everything set up in my new house. And uh, I've also been really busy with a lot of new projects. So, yeah. Do you use... Do you do any Melodyne or is it just Autotune? I use Autotune EFX by Antares. Um... And, uh, yeah. So one more time for the stream. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming. I hope you'll stream Staring at the Ceiling by Charlie on Spotify. Uh, I'll play it here as we exit. And, uh, yeah. Thank you guys again for coming. My name is Charlie, and I'll see you guys in the next stream. Let's go. Just play the dang song, won't you? Here we go. I've had my fair share of sleepless nights Had spinning thoughts rushing, I'm dissatisfied Tired of the bright lights, they're blinding me Wondering why you ever bothered to stick with me I've been a fucking mess since day one I'm stuck inside my head and need someone I wonder what your friends have said about me 
I know you don't care though, so why do I even fucking bother? You got me staring at the ceiling again. I'm wondering if you think about me too. My thoughts are pounding at the back of my head while you're moving along. So Pounding at the back of my head while you're moving along, so. 